Speaking of calling, you, know, you, you were just about to talk about how Ranger is so popular on Blood Run because of mobility options and safety. Obviously, a big part of Blood Run is that sort of center rim with the rail, the heavy armor up top, and the mega health just through the doorway. That is a big area of contention at almost every single point of the map. And Ranger can collect both, like two of those pickups at the same time, which really just minimizes the amount of time you're in the open, you're exposed in that area. And also, it's just safety, right? Being able to pick up one of them, throw a die orb, and then teleport. They're both going to be able to collect the uh, heavy armor without having to hurt themselves the rocket jump either, because Ranger's going to be able to die orb up there. Nyx is going to be able to go for her wall jump. So they're going to be able to sort of collect the heavy armor, which normally is quite a risky thing to take anyway, because it is right out in the open. But you're kind of not doing that little bit of extra damage to yourself where you rocket jump up there and then get caught out. And that little little bit of damage did to yourself might have saved you if you got out of there. But they're both not really going to suffer from that problem, I don't think. So loading into this match any second now, just getting through the warm-up phase and we'll be good to go. So just to reiterate, this is Duel for the Quake World Championships. It's a round of 16 game, single elimination. Whoever loses this series will be eliminated from the tournament. Now they've both gone in for Sawlag first in a closed quarters map like this. Sawlag is just unbelievably lethal. What's especially seeing his clutch in a, you know, one of the recent balance patches doesn't have as much health as he used to have, making Saw like pretty much the, tank, the new tankiest champion in the entire game. And point blank, here we go, Noctis! Showing us exactly why Sawlag point blank is so dangerous. So an interesting thing about Sawlag, her passive, which makes her immune to acid, she's immune to the damage over time effect from the acid, but will still get hurt by the impact damage from another Sawlag. So it means your survivability in the mirror isn't that bad. But if you are point blank like that, and your opponent is just nailing you in the face with acid, you are still going to get shredded just like the others. Yeah, Anarchy's injection doesn't really help him in that confrontation either. But here we go, LG. Look, actually, look, Faz's LG was a little bit more on point in that fight. Indeed, however, though, less than a minute into this round, and Noctis already with a champion advantage. We've seen how crucial that can be, but a lot of lightning coming through. Noctis in a bad situation, tries to get the asset out. One of them connects, but I think Faz has plenty of time to top himself Ooh. up. This damage over time shouldn't matter too much. Now, that, that injection isn't really going to help Noctis a huge amount. He has a little bit of armor, but really, you can't really tank and they trade it one for one. Wow, I mean, who does that benefit? I mean, we're now back to one champion apiece a minute into this round, and already one champion left for both players. It's also interesting, Faz opting to go for the starting shotgun instead of the machine gun that like we normally see. I wonder what the reasoning is behind that. Yeah, we'll find out. Might ask him about it later on, but Noctis with that Nyx. And it's kind of what we talked about. They're both going to be able to sort of contest those important power-ups or pickups in the middle. Uh, putting himself not a huge amount of risk because Ranger in a bad spot can just die roll about danger. Nyx can use her Ghost Walk. Still though, Dire Orb, a much lower cooldown, so we can have a lot more of those in a realistic scenario, but Noctis, if he manages his Ghost Walk well, can definitely get around. But now you can see two minutes into this round, but still, next kill, we'll take it. First to three rounds is Duel. You have to take out three champions each, and then three rounds for the map. And it's first to two maps, and so these guys plenty of work left to do. It's likely this next fight might take place near Mega. As I said that though, Faz kind of forced to retreat a little bit, especially with that missed rail. Completely uncontested Faz, he's in a spot of bother now. You have to be careful. These are two champions that do take a, a massive amount of damage from the Railgun, but it's because they haven't got like the oh. highest, I mean, I guess Nick's one of the weaker champions in the game in terms of health and armor, but Ranger much more of, I suppose, like that. Oh, here we go. Level. Oh, used aggressively. Yep, Faz wasn't ready. Here comes the ambush. Tries to die roll back danger. <gasps> that rocket didn't do enough damage. Very nearly did it, but Faz with the escape. That was very good for Faz to be able to survive that. We can see just how low he is. All oh, rockets coming through. Faz still in a bad situation here, but Noctis not being too overly aggressive here. I love that play. Like, Noctis has done such a good job of sort of controlling the center of the map. He's got control over both of the pickups. And realistically, he knew that there was no way Faz was going to be able to compete with the health and armor that Noctis had access to. And if he surprises him with the Ghost Walk, Faz may as well have been brown bread, but he survived on an extra little bit of HP. Still though, he's going to have access to the heavy armor. Oh, stuck up behind him, the direct on Faz. Faz in a miserable situation, and he is going to get taken down. Noctis is going to finish off the first round with a great ambush. I respect the die roll attempt, like fight. right there. I mean, he kind of had to go for the telefrag. That's kind of his only option, really. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, he didn't have the same health, didn't have the same armor. He was going to get chased down as well. If he got the telefrag there, it would have just been a complete turnaround. And in many ways, it's probably the best comeback mechanic in the game, because that die roll telefrag ignores all health and armor. That is an instant kill. I think as soon as Noctis saw that big fat 100, oh hang on, speaking of which, loads of damage coming through here for Noctis, but Faz is still alive because he picked up the mega health, not going to die here, but damage over time. Noctis has a rough idea where he is, but you know at the end of the last round, as soon as Noctis saw that big 100 from Rocket, he was like, oh, okay, time for me to go in, finish off this frag. Now Faz going Anarchy first instead. In between rounds, you are able to choose your uh, champion, or well, the first champion that goes first in between rounds. 
give yourself a little bit more of an edge. Like we were talking about earlier, right? It's the, the, the element of matchups or comfort. And Noctis just might be the most comfortable on Sawlag, but Faz might think that his Anarchy has a better job at dealing with Noctis on this Sawlag. But you, know, you, you haven't got a lot of room for error to make those decisions. You have to be confident in your picks. We've seen how dangerous this champion is at point blank. And if you know Anarchy goes toe to toe with Sawlag, it's unlikely he's going to survive even with that injection. So Faz, he's going to know that. He's going to know he has to be super careful. Yeah, but Anarchy definitely has the mobility to stay at that sort of medium range where it's quite hard for a Sawlag player to really guarantee the acid, you know, the acid doesn't move. It's not the fastest moving projectile in the game. So there is an element of almost like a read where you try and like lead your opponent into Ooh. it. But Anarchy being a small guy, great air mobility, should be able to dodge acid better than most. I do love the way Faz is approaching this matchup. He's really sort of just dancing at that magical, just out of range of Sawlag's acid. So he's going in for that rail, that sort of running. long distance rail. Just make sure that when the fight happens, Noctis isn't heavily stacked. But hang on, does get a little bit of uh, acid ticking down. Faz picks up one health, so he's going to be okay. Yeah, that I actually, actually no, I think, yeah, the ejection. He popped the ejection instead of uh, picking up a health item right there. I had to. I actually love how Noctis played that there, though. As soon as he saw Faz in, he threw acid immediately, like one blotch of it at Faz, and the rest at the doorway Faz was likely to use to get away, which forced Faz to, uh, to go back the way he just came into the room, which obviously left him in quite a low HP situation. It's well played by Noctis. Yeah, 100%. And it also forced Faz to use his injection just so the ticking damage didn't kill him. Oh, that hurt a lot. It actually hurt, hurt both of them. Huge amount. Undone quite swiftly though with those uh, couple of small healths. Now, we've already seen just how powerful armor can be though, just being able to mitigate that damage on someone like Anarchy that usually is quite susceptible to being railed and almost dying in one because of it when he's got armor, well, suddenly oh. he gets a lot more tanky. Baz almost went around that corner, you know, Noctis was kind of laying that trap and he actually is still, still there. Still there. I wonder if Faz is going to go around that corner. Hasn't heard or seen anything. Look, I respect the oh, patience. Oh, Noctis, oh. Noctis is certain that he has coming round. Oh, he can't oh wait a minute! He springs the trap! Forced to use the injection again, but Noctis, he's going to have vision. He would have seen those damage numbers. He knows that Faz is here, and he knows that Faz is very weak. It looks like Noctis not really feeling like pushing the aggression at all. You know, just wanting to be careful, even though he has loads of health of armor. But, you know, being able to get stacked up can take quite a while. So if you know at the very least you've taken some of that stack down from your opponent, take some of that health and armor away, you know that in the next engagement, if you're fully stacked, then you might have an advantage just on that alone. He has one of those rails, but Noctis did manage to collect the mega health. So not a huge amount of progress done there. Three seconds on the heavy armor, but Noctis looking to try and control this one. Faz keeping the distance. Crucial pickup for Faz after being low on health and armor for so much of this round. Oh, that heavy armor is going to be huge for him, but just at so much damage from that rocket launcher anyway. Or at least I suppose he took it away from Noctis. Seen how dangerous Sawlag can be with loads of armor. The scary thing is every single time one of those rails. Oh wow, no! Took a little bit of damage on the way. The acid as well. Faz has to stand in the acid pool. Make sure he takes a little bit less. And never mind, actually, he didn't get hit by the tick. Very fortunate. That could have been dangerous though. Noctis ever so slightly off the mark with the acid. I mean, it, it's, it's harder to hit that than it might appear as well. Like, yes, you do shoot a ton of projectiles, but still, like, they are slow moving. They don't have a huge radius on them. Faz needs some armor, and he needs it right now. The second Noctis lands a single rail, he's going to get one shot here. There we go, waiting for that 25 armor. Now he'll be able to survive at least one of them. And here's just that, that, that diversity in how rounds could look in Duel. Our first round, we had, like, four frags in, like, a minute and a half. However, here we're going on to the overtime mark, which is five minutes without a single kill on the board. We might have ourselves a one frag round at this point as hugging the wall, trying to be as careful as possible. Oh, I love the uh, little speed boost right there. Knowing Faz is going to go for the heavy armor, that's one thing you can do with these champions that have good mobility off certain things, where if you predict they're going to be somewhere, and they're not ready for you to use the sheer level of speed, you can go for, wait a minute, airborne rocket launcher, going down, meeting him in the air, going in for the injection to survive, but is it going to be enough? <gasps> Ever so slightly not the case. Noctis with only machine gun, only had one shot on his rail. I think he was thinking that perhaps the machine gun easier to guarantee damage might have been enough, but unfortunately ever so slightly lower. Oh, Noctis did. did actually uh, miss the rail on the way, but I'm not sure he cares too much about it. And there's <laughs> that air mobility from Anarchy coming through. Normally if you get hit by a lightning gun from below, you are a sitting duck at the mercy of the accuracy of the person below you, but Anarchy just zipping all over the place to survive. It's that increased air movement. I mean, if he gets caught in a bad spot, either by a rocket or knocked up by LG, he is able to kind of navigate a little bit more free than other champions. But here we go. We're in sudden death. The next champion that goes down is going to take the round uh, for the player that just got the kill. So if Noctis takes out Faz here, he's going to be two rounds up. Hang after such a grind, a five-minute round, you, no one wants to lose here. 
After doing so much work, Noctis gets a little bit of damage onto Faz, but Faz with the mega health stopped himself up. Yeah, and not how very yeah. low on health. He took so much damage in that exchange. If Faz catches him off guard right now with like an LG or something, the acid spit is down. It's going to have to be an honest comeback if I've ever seen one. But in 10 seconds, that will be swiftly undone. Nice amount of hourglasses on the map. Hourglasses do take off cooldown off your ability. You can see the crouching though, using the crouch to make as little noise while moving as possible. You'll see all the players in today's tournament will be doing this. They'll just be looking around, seemingly standing still doing nothing. What they're doing is they're listening out for audio cues, listening for pickups. You know, certain pickups make certain noises when you collect them. They're listening for it so they can get an idea on where they're- Oh wow, the is. prediction, Faz! He is successful on the teleporter, but really, Noctis was way too stacked. He's gonna try and head him off a little bit with that heavy armor, but realistically, both forced back into that long range situation once again. Faz, he doesn't want to overextend. You know, the second he goes point blank and he eats the acid, he is going to die. But what he's done such an amazing job of in this round is the second uh -oh. the acid is. Hang on, uh -oh. no, the trap has been laid! Is it going to be enough to survive? No, the acid damage over time. Is no, it Noctis, be Noctis committed suicide just Prepare seconds before, but the, oh, the damage every time with the acid finished him off anyway. I just realized that. You know, if Noctis <laughs> didn't accidentally blow himself up there, he was gonna <laughs> sort of come off better in that all, all he had to do wow. was not damage himself, and the, and the acid would have done the rest. Oh, I mean, dear. Noctis said it himself right in the chat. Oops. Oh, I mean, what else can you say about it? That was a crucial error at the end of such a long round. And this could be 2 0 to Noctis, but now we're tied up to one round apiece, and Faz going straight back to Sawleg. I didn't notice that, that suicide until the last possible minute. It was, so such an unfortunate. it was such an unfortunate to accidentally do it, but here's the change. They've both gone Sawlag -like first again. I'm not sure Faz is actually, he might not be very comfortable playing that game plan, but head him off once more. And even though Sawlag -like doesn't take the tick damage, the impact damage is still sufficient. I mean, 25 damage on top of LG per tick. That's a huge amount of damage output in a short time, especially if you're p uh, combining it with the damage of the weapon you have in your hands at the time. That is a lot of damage depending on what you've got equipped. But Faz, you know, we saw a, a five minute, almost six minute round with just one frag in it, less than a minute already. Faz is winning champion advantage three to two. So we put Noctis in the exact same sort of situation that was on Faz last time. I wonder who's going to be able to sort of come off better in this exchange because what Faz did for five minutes plus was just stay as far out of range as possible with Sawlag. And the second the fight Ooh. happened, Noctis was the one that laid the trap. It just didn't work out for him. Faz was in severe danger there though. Only had 35 HP. Noctis maybe was in eyesight, but Noctis being so careful. Oh, here we go again! There's the fight! There's no way Noctis is going to survive that one. Again, it's just, if you just so happen to go face to face with a Sawlag and you don't have the same level of health and armor, you really can't survive, especially if their LG or rocket is ridiculously on point as well. It's almost like Sawlag is just like getting surprised and it's just making a jump and the absolute reflex is to just shoot acid. But you're point blank, you're not dodging it at that range. It's not just the tick damage, but closer you are, the higher chance you have of those individual acid spits hitting as well, and they themselves do a chunk of damage too. I mean, Nyx being one of the champions of the game that has some decent answers for that, I think. Um, using the Ghost Walk to nullify damage point blank. If you get caught, if you have Ghost Walk available, you can just instantly try and get out of that situation and use the uh, acid up. But if you haven't got Ghost Walk, you are just as much of a sitting duck as anyone else at point blank. Oh, oh almost got the rail. That would have been a death sentence. But Faz, able to escape, get a couple of those small healths and a little bit of armor. So now, again, he can survive a rail or two. That is so important in this matchup, being able to make sure you don't get one shot in these situations. I mean, we are seeing that quite a lot, unfortunately, as these crucial rails not get quite hitting the mark, but Noctis getting so much damage on this LG, but again, doesn't want to chase it, doesn't want to overcommit. Oh! But that's the rail Noctis needs to be hitting. Gonna take out Faz's saw lag. That was so well played. Like, Noctis got the... Got the rocket on deck and then just completed the damage with the LG. Knew he was gonna go near that heavy armor. I think Faz must have just expected to survive that, but... Realistically, Noctis just did way more damage to him and at the last minute chose to play it safe. He opted to go for health first and then bank everything on the rail. All right, Nyx versus Anarchy. This is that early days week one matchup. These two champions were core on almost every single team. Obviously in the right hands, all the ambush from below. Oh, the rocket doesn't quite connect. Noctis definitely could have taken out Faz there if it was a little bit more on the money. Yeah, he needs to be careful. The problem is he hasn't got any armor. And Faz, I mean, that's both these players very talented with the rail. And he's he's only just got armor back now, but with 75 HP, you get hit by a single rail and that's it, the round's over. So I don't think Noctis really wants to risk it. Don't give him an opening, because if they'll take it, I don't think he's actually quite seen Faz either. Now Noctis is trying to wait to ambush at this mega health. We can see Faz just about there. Ooh, a little bit preemptive. Faz juking back. 
trading out the power up for power up. And heavy they, uh, armor. they both missed the rail, so that's going to be a bit of an exchange right there. Well, these are two players. You know, they are probably training partners in duel. You know, at the very least, we know they're on the, the same team oh. of sacrifice. Both members of not too fast. Oh, but there's the amateur, the Ghost Walker, Noctis. Manages to take out Faz. We might see a full comeback with this Nyx by herself against Faz's entire lineup. If you're brave and you play Nyx, that can be a really dangerous combination. Because it's just it. You, before a fight happens, you go in for the Ghost Walk, you ambush someone, spring the trap, and it's uncontested damage. They don't know that you're there. How can they dodge a rail or a rocket if they don't know where you are? But it's a bit of an all or nothing, you know, throwing all your eggs in one basket. Because if you do that and you miss one of those shots, you then don't have the Ghost Walk to get yourself out of a fight. So if you do it to ambush, you better make sure you get that frag or you've got no escape option as a very squishy champion. Oh, Noctis hasn't had a huge issue doing that so far. Rather similar respawn like said, right? It's, it's a confidence thing. If you're being a Nyx player and you are making those kind of plays, you know, we, we have a lot of, a lot of players, particularly you know, Cooler being one of them as well, that we know is, is great with Nyx and is great at that sort of aggressive style. Confidence is something that could just, you know, really brings all these players together. Just misses the rail. Well played though, kind of knowing that Faz really does need that rocket launcher in these exchanges, but didn't quite get the damage output for it. I was talking to Noctis earlier on, he said that his goal was actually just to make it out of his group. His goal in Sacrifice is to win Sacrifice with Not Too Fast, um, but his goal in Duel was just to make it out of the group. You know, these guys have already made 10k just by being at this stage. And here we go, sudden, sudden death. death. Doesn't mean a huge amount because he is one champion, will win the round regardless, but the fact that Noctis has kind of achieved his goal, he might be able to play a little bit more loose now. And there we go, he's seen the LG. Faz, he knows where he is. The uncontested rocket gets 25, gets 100! But Faz able to escape. Faz having armor there really oh. saved his hide. Oh, but there's a point blank fight. Oh, nice oh, damage coming through. Noctis with a full comeback. Wow. I mean, that was so well played. You almost don't Prepare see. You almost never see Noctis use Nyx to that effect because he is so focused on these other champions. But just showing us that he's still got a fantastic Nyx. Good to go. Faz down on one round. Just I so that, well played. I actually think that's a big part of these tools so far is, is when those like surprise engagements happen, right? You know, when we see players have a clear understanding of where each other are, and you, you see those like almost like zoning attempts with nails and rockets. But it's when you're, you're stuck right in their face. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, Noctis really not able to survive that one. I mean, he had a lot of damage on deck when he had the super nail gun with the acid spit. If a little bit more of those nails connected, then by far it would have done a way more damage than that. But. Has just playing that exchange a bit better. But on the subject of those you know, up close encounters that you're not prepared for, that really is where your reactions and the ability to think on your feet has to come into account. You've got to be able to just take those fights. You waste half a second, that might be enough damage to make sure that you are dead. You know, so you've got to be able to think on your feet as quickly as possible. Still though, Faz able to take out Noctis' sword lag very fast. We saw this last time and Noctis was able to make a full comeback, but now it's going to be difficult. Only just able to pick up some armor, but not enough Faz with a crucial kill on Noctis. And again, has put Noctis in a situation. Oh, but what an amazing one. respawn. He's forced the Ghost Walk out early. If he fights Noctis now, oh, he's oh, going to be on. dead. That could have been it. That could have been everything. Oh, that oh, voice was dead as well. That rail connected. Noctis would be down one round again. It would have been the final round. Faz has just been a bit of a bully right now. Forced it, poor old Noctis having to make a full champion comeback with just Nyx again, two rounds in a row. Hang on a minute. Faz with one rail. Noctis has to try and get out of there. Cannot contest this. Oh, the cheeky stuff. He's sure Noctis is going to use that jump pad down there, but no, doesn't dedicate to it for too long. The longer you're standing still, the more at risk you will become. Yeah, Noctis actually lying in wait. He would have heard that armor get collected. Now. A little bit of damage, but really not a huge amount so far. Uh, Ghost Walk undoing all the ticking damage over time, but nice prediction of actually knowing where Noctis was going to lie and wait. 30 damage on a rocket, not a huge amount there, so Noctis will take that all day just to deny the mega health from Faz. If you can keep this champion away from getting heavily stacked, then your chances of winning a fight is going to be so much higher. And if you let Sawlag get heavily stacked up, even now with the default 150 health, 100 armor, that is more than enough. It's a fight. It's a good amount of tankiness for sure. As we can see, Faz has every weapon locked and loaded too. I mean, he has everything he needs to win this round. He did last time, and Noctis was still able to make the comeback. Not even remotely interested in taking that fight. Probably thinking it's going to be way more important to try and take the heavy armor, but hang on a minute. Noctis gets the frag. Not very healthy though, and that damage over time effect also not going to help too much. Yeah, completely nullified by the, the mega health pickup. Noctis playing this well, getting Faz a saw like off. The board. Now we know Anarchy and Ranger left. Noctis did this last round. He had a full comeback with just Nyx by herself. He might be able to do the same thing here, but he's going to have to be very careful what engagements he decides to go with. Every time he's gone for one of those assassination ghost walks, it has worked wonders. I wonder if there's going to be that one moment where it just doesn't work out. 
and he uh, gets punished for it heavily. But so far, every single one of them has worked out. This is a great move from going. Noctis, though, able to get both the, the, the heavy armor and the mega health. I mean, especially on someone like Nyx, that has the extra layer of survivability. Here we go, have all that stack. Again, Baz isn't ready. Minimal damage. Still following. Big pickups won't be up for a while. Oh, That's wow. a rail. Very dangerous for Baz. Oh, the teleporter just in the nick of time. Baz would have been dead. Meat, if he didn't get away. Oh, fantastic dodging, though. Minimal damage taken, replying with that rail gun. And I mean, these guys, they are, you said it yourself, evenly matched. And there we go, 2-2, two, two, one round away from taking this first map. And this is indeed only the first map. I mean, we might have three maps that all go down to the fifth round. Knowing these guys, knowing how much they play together. I mean, again, we have to remember they are teammates in Not Too Fast. You are in a great position to do very well in the sacrifice game. So these are friends, they are, they are training buddies together. Also long time Quake players each. When you're in tournament, there are no friends in a 1v1 bracket. Everyone is your enemy. Oh, fully charged rail coming through, but Faz. Not going to quite do enough there. Noctis fully stacked on health and armor, so we're going to sponge that up, no problem. Oh, oh not quite. Almost. Oh, hang on. A lot of damage coming through. The acid completely wasted, unfortunately, on the side of Faz. That does mean, though, that Noctis can be a little bit more brave in these exchanges, having to take the damage, understanding that I just need to go fast. I need to ignore how much health I've got and get that mega health. Baz, though, still no armor. So if Noctis catches him off guard, right, right, now, right before? No, not quite able to chase it down. Baz. Yeah, that was a huge miss from Noctis. None of those acids even close to connecting. Oh, there's a good situation for Faz, but no, he missed a few rockets. Noctis trying to fight back. Noctis, there we go. A little bit of damage from the lightning gun. Going to finish him off, and Faz puts himself in a good situation to take this final round. That was a really weird exchange, actually. Like, neither of them did a huge amount of damage with those rockets. Both doing a fantastic uh, job of dodging, but... Baz just a bit more equipped for the fight. Look at how much LG he just did in a small time. That was very impressive. Oh, there's oh. the read on the jump pad, but not quite enough. Noctis going to take out that frag for sure. He's going to secure himself the armor before Faz has time to contest it. Oh, he's airborne. Oh. There's nothing he's doing to stop that one, even with the increased air mobility. Up against that wall, guaranteed rocket. Dead. Oh, Zyra obviously it used. Didn't follow, but we know a very low cooldown on it, so Faz probably going to have that up again soon. Yeah, I reckon if Faz saw knock this down on bottom, he probably wouldn't teleport to Dyro. Maybe trying to catch uh, sight of where he was. Rocket's coming through. Little bit of damage. So he knows that at the very least he did something there. <laughs> oh my word. That is uh, some speed right there. Guarantee himself the heavy armor also. We pick it up two cycles in a row. This is good for him. Oh, 100. He's going to go for the kill. He knows he has it guaranteed. The second he had sight of that 100 damage, that was all she wrote. And that's good. That's a great start for Noctis, realizing that in this in a situation that single elimination, first to two maps. He's done half the work. He has 50% of his progress now, being able to advance over Faz. But I mean, to do so, he had to make a full comeback in his next win. And then in the last round, he was looking like he was maybe on the back foot again. But again, it's composure, right? When you've been playing competitively as long as these guys have, being able to make those crucial choices in the heat of the moment. It's the kind of stuff we see, and Noctis could be pulling off ahead. But that was Noctis's pick was the blood run, and it was super, super close. So going on to a map that now Faz wants to play, I wonder how things will pan out. Because it, on the map that you select, if you don't win dominantly, it means that your opponent is comfortable in the same areas that you are comfortable. So going into a map that Faz wants to play, I wonder how well Noctis will do. I mean, it, it was a similar lineup. And if, if that's going to remain true, and they're both going to be playing very similar champions in almost every map, then you're basically playing for personal comfort more so than you just think you have a strategy that is unbeatable on that map, right? So Blood Covenant, if once again they go with both Sawlag, both Anarchy, and then a swapping out third, which yeah, we might see the same we might see the well, same lineup. Well, because either of those, on Blood Covenant, yeah, yeah. so is Ranger. Either of those team compositions will work really well on Blood Covenant purely because of just, well, Sawlag is dangerous essentially anywhere, um, but then you've got Ranger and Nyx, the ability to go wherever they want to go, whenever they want to go, certain points, especially on the high ground of Blood Covenant. Both going in for Anarchy again. Both Skullhead as well, I like that. I like the new customizations in this update in general, to be honest. Now, Does both Does have Nyx. horns too? It's not even just a skull, he's got horns. Now, let's take a look at the lineup. Ranger, Nyx and Anarchy instead, but Noctis going back with Sawlag. So he's going to have a, a distinct difference in health and armor with that final pick. We have kind of seen what Sawlag can do to a lineup of not particularly strong champions in terms of health and armor. I know Ranger kind of has more default health, but even he, if he gets caught point blank against the Sawlag with Acid Ready, will still go down quite quickly because even the tanky champions get melted down. 
But we actually saw this yesterday um, from Toxic. This was the map that Toxic was able to make a uh, basically pull it back and even things out versus Razy. It was he was basically just getting more than this map he desperately needed to, to bring it back. And Toxic was able to do that. And it was Razy saw lag that was being such a problem, and it came down from those point blank acid fights where Razy was just being really accurate, doing a ton of damage point blank. So Toxic's adjustment was to sit at that sort of medium range and dodge, right? A, a, a range that it's not guaranteed damage for Solag. The Solag has to at least read or aim where he thinks you're going to be. And Blood Covenant is a really good map to do that, especially if you have a high hyper-mobile composition, which we now see that Faz is going towards. But because of the skill that Noctis has with every champion that he selected, on the difference where Razy had, it was Solag 100% of the time every time because it was just his absolute favorite champion that he has the most success with, Noctis is really strong with Anarchy, with Nyx, with Ranger. And right here, as you can see, they've both gone Anarchy first, which means that Noctis it's very much not going to be a similar match that we saw yesterday. You know, if he's going to go Anarchy first, he's not going to be able to sort of play that. Def uh, Faz won't be able to play that defensive game and just sort of deal with Sawlag first, maybe win on champion limit, because Noctis can do the exact same thing back with Nyx and Anarchy together. So Anarchy versus Anarchy is an interesting matchup because Anarchy generally in duel is really good at running the clock. Uh oh, playing very defensive. Hang on a minute, caught in a bad position here. Both of them very low. The injection pops. Oh, and Faz is going to go down as the first casualty here. Noctis getting the advantage. Now, back to what I was saying, Anarchy. We know he's really good at running the clock and being defensive, but he is also really great at chasing down other champions that try and do that themselves. But we see Faz has actually just lost his Anarchy, so now Noctis is going to have that advantage until Faz can try and even this out. I love that exchange, by the way, when they were both fighting in that jump pad. The fact that Noctis um, understood that if Faz is forced into using his injection, he's going to be out of action for a couple of seconds while he's in the injection animation. And that was going to be completely uncontested free damage. Noctis almost died. You know, at any point he died, he probably would have gone, maybe I should have used the injection. But he stayed true to his guns and allowed Faz to make the first move. And when he made the first move, he wasn't able to fire. So though, we've kind of just been seeing this passively as we go along. This is one of the reasons Anarchy is so good on Blood Covenant. Look at the mobility, look at his options, but getting it taken down straight away by Faz. Not having any of it, and now we're going to another mirror scenario with Nyx on both sides. That was quite interesting. He once again actually didn't have the chance to pop his injection right before he went down there. And Noctis, a little bit more stacked up. I know Faz has a little chunk of extra armor, but Noctis with the Mega. The Faz has been alive for a little bit longer, so he does have those crucial weapons. That that that, that magic three, the rail gun, the rocket, and the, the lightning gun. Oh, you can see him, but the ghost walk for both of them. This is going to be probably oh. not a decisive <laughs> engagement as they both have that. Oh, option, right. But rails not quite connecting. I mean, she has pretty much the smallest hitbox in the game. She is not the easiest champion to tag. I mean, both these guys are phenomenal with the rail, and the accuracy is on point. They both missed three rails in a row. Hide me. Yeah, Faz has to be careful. He would have seen the uh, ghost walk animation by then. Wow, there's what one a rail. Shot. One more. <gasps> That could have been everything. Oh, he's going for the armor. He did manage to pick it up, but still very low. And Noctis dies again. Faz is going to pull off ahead. Now oh, here we go. He's going into Sawlag. But this is an amazing spawn. Noctis really just kind of stuck to his default weapons with the acid. Acid now gone. He just has to try and get out of there. Noctis understands he can't fight with the weapons he has. He needs to get more weapons ready. So like alone though, going for the mega health. Uh oh. Let's see, he is in the air. Noctis don't think he quite had the weaponry to <gasps> take advantage of that shot. Noctis just needed an extra eight damage! The with oh. rail. Oh, wow! I mean, that was just a really crazy exchange regardless. Faz had 8 HP for so long there. It was a bit of a tough situation for Faz to be in, though. 8 health, no Ghost Walk available. Mega health just got picked up. All he could do was jump down, perhaps, for the armor, but Noctis was down there. I mean, it, he didn't really have much options in that situation. And he's going to go towards that Mega. I think Noctis really understands that... Um, Faz is going to be able to sort of pick that up for free. So they're going to exchange it heavy for Mega. I think it's a, it's a good call that Noctis decided not to sort of pursue that too heavily. And uh, right, that was quite a quick kill right there. I mean, that was a, a reactionary straight. dire or <laughs> telefrag kill. That was confidence on like... <laughs> I mean, Faz kind of just summed it up, right? Round Wrecked. I thought it wasn't up yet. I mean, that's that's quite... Because the Dire Orb has some of the smallest cooldown in the entire game. So when you expect it to not be ready, you really need to be on point of when you think the Dire Orb has been used. It's like 20 seconds or something. But either way, that was just... That was too sick. The comeback mechanic of a Ranger. Doesn't matter how much health you have. One Dire Orb and the game is over. I mean, the dire orb by itself, I mean, you know, I, I could be wrong here, but I'm like 99% sure I'm not. The dire orb, like, telefrag damage that it, you know, actually registers in the game is the highest of anything in the game. It's like 10,000 or something like that. It's it is like a ludicrous amount, which is why, you know, you, you might see, um, you know, players with really high player damage at the end of a match. It's because the player damage adds what the telefrag damage does with the dire orb. 
because it just does it does so much. That's how it kills anything Stop in one watch. go. But because of that, like I said, absolute one of the best comeback mechanics in this entire game. Not just because he has the mega, a little bit overcharged, throw for a split second, can still tank one rail, but not anymore. Oh, speaking I of which, a minute Faz sending Noctis into the expensive China. Now you can break those pots, you get awards now. Yeah, that's definitely why he did that. 100%. Now, Faz is in big trouble. He's got a huge amount of health and armor left. Noctis put down the back foot as well. Faz consistently getting the first frag of the round almost every single time now. There we go. Letting the sort of just go back and forth. You do see this quite often, and when they both have the exact same kind of uh, respawn time, heavy armor and mega health, it becomes a game of almost like a game of chicken. You know, are we gonna every 30 seconds are we gonna play it safe? Are we both gonna just uh, take that trade in essence? Or when the next power up respawns, am I gonna be brave and try and ambush you and meet you there? You know, so though Faz trying to cycle around controlling these. Heavy armor and mega health could be up soon, but oh, a lot of damage coming through for Faz. Noctis wasn't quite able to finish him off, but got him low. I bet Heavy Armor and Mega Health both up, but Faz going straight for the Mega Health. This was actually really brave. I, I, I love that idea. He knew that Noctis was going to go back and try and challenge the Heavy. But is it going to be enough? He is still so weak. Can't take a single rail. Trying to dodge by every ounce of it. And Noctis not able to get the rail that he needed. That was such a beautiful movement though from Faz that you saw he realized he was one shot away from death. So you saw him sort of just juking back and forth, trying to dare Noctis to take the shot. That really was some of the most slippery movement I think I've seen so far in Duel. Even with that injection, Goodbye, as I was about to say, even with the injection, he doesn't have the armor right, so can't tank a single rail in that situation. There's the aggression. Noctis being a very aggressive Nyx player right now, realizing when he's really just trying to get the jump on you, and it's working out for him the majority of the time. Oh, we almost saw a telefrag right there, but the uh, invisibility. We'll see to that. That decision making. I think Noctis opting to go for the ghost walk didn't want to get telefragged himself, or he'd even have the risk for it. I think uh, trading ability for ability when you're just going to end that exchange with more health, that's always going to be quite a win for you, I think. Indeed, Noctis doing a lot of damage here, though. Trying to get a few rockets on the go. As far as we see, has plenty of armor left to go. Noctis definitely having to run away here, but heavy armor is up. Perfect way to bring himself back into the fight. Two seconds on that mega. Actually, uh, Faz running around the other side. Once again, challenging. Expecting oh, that was a lot of damage on a rocket for a Nyx. And when he comes out of the face shift, here we go. Faz has to try and really defend himself. Oh, that almost was direct rocket. Would have 100% killed him there. Looks like Faz is able to get the mega health. That's going to put him in a great situation, but Noctis still trying to take the fight, getting a little bit of damage here and there. 50, oh. That's the number he's been looking for. Not ideal as much as possible, but it's definitely enough for someone like Nyx to try and get rid of the progress made on that mega health. Now we only have one minute and 20 seconds left. Whoever gets this frag will kind of realistically be able to kind of play that sort of runaway game for the remaining minute or so. Too much of a risk to use that teleporter. You almost never see these guys use that teleporter in the situation. Use a teleporter at one point and eat a direct and that's it. It's all over. I don't think they find it worth the risk at all. Faz went for the shot, didn't quite connect, but the second one is. Third one, not quite recharged in time. Noctis has to be careful, doesn't have any armor. If he gets hit by anything here, he's probably going to die. Hang on, there's the Ghost Walk used aggressively, and Faz responds with a defensive Ghost Walk. That is the two sides of the next coin. That's th what I find really interesting in this sort of mirror match exchange is that you can technically ambush one Nyx, but if you've both got Ghost Walk and you take that one bit of damage, you can just pop your Ghost Walk and get out of there it's basically immediately. 30 seconds left. Whoa. Faz has tried to dodge these rockets to the best of his ability, but Noctis a little bit more healthy for this fight. Noctis going in for the fight, actually, indeed. This is unbelievably aggressive throughout this entire duel. If he thinks he can get a kill, he will press it. But if he's got Ghost Walk available, he can be brave, he can go in for the kill, and then get out of there if it goes sour. Still though, Noctis, very healthy on the stack at the moment, just able to get the heavy armor in this mirror scenario. I mean, when you've got armor nice. next, that can be huge, but I mean, Railgun, there are a few better weapons for just deleting the progress of the stack. Noctis knows he's picked up the heavies. This is really brave, but just as we said, using the aggressive Ghost Walk, but Faz able to sort of answer back. Huge damage on the rocket. Noctis is nearly dead. And the final rocket to seal the deal. Faz's pick on Blood Covenant has been extremely useful so far. Prepare Two to rounds to zero at the moment. One round away from tying things up one map apiece, but Noctis, round we've seen him make individual round comebacks, three. but now he has a bit of a mountain to climb. Three one. rounds in a row round three. to win the series. I mean, if Noctis wins this map, he actually advances and eliminates Faz. So you know Faz is playing with everything he can because his dual success at the World Championships 
is resting on his success in this one set. Definitely not playing like a man that's on the back foot though. Faz, very, very confident, but this is where the years of Quake experience come into fruition. And with a top 16 bracket of so many legends in one place, I think this level of composure we're going to be used to seeing. In this exchange, Faz is going to be a little bit more better off because he's going to be able to dodge those super nails while doing instant projectiles himself, but not if he takes too many super nails just like that one. That was a very interesting trade-off there, though, with, you know, the, where you're trading nails for machine gun. Machine gun actually does a significant amount when you've got the upgraded version, but still, like, the nail gun damage is way harder to guarantee, but it hits so hard, especially on someone like Anarchy that doesn't have a lot of health to go with anyway. I still get really scared about that quad damage super nail gun where it's 80 damage a shot for each nail. It's like, whoa, dearie me. It's more than enough to get the job done, but 100%. Back into a minute. This Anarchy face-off. The Anarchy mirror can be quite slow, or it can be hugely explosive. It really is one of the defining matchups, I think, of Duel. The fights are fast, but I think outside of fights, it can be very slow and calculated. Neither Anarchy wants to overextend but too much. But that's not really the way Noctis has been playing this, though. Noctis has been favoring those aggressive fights where he's just forcing it onto Faz and forcing Faz to defend himself in situations that he might not really want to take a fight. But here, Faz has that distance on Noctis right now. When they've both got a rocket and they've both got a rail, we're pretty much going to see the same kind of thing. It's going to be just when the fight inevitably happens, who comes off the exchange better? And then it's going to be a question of what champion do we see next? Here comes Faz, full speed ahead. Don't think he was quite ready for Look uh, at that shot on that yeah. rail. He saw a quick snap too. That was such a beautiful shot by Faz. Oh, Noctis barely able to escape with his life. I feel like if Faz missed that rail, Noctis absolutely would have gone in for the kill during that downtime. But because Faz was just so on point, he was able to just deter Noctis from landing it. Going in. The exchange again. 10 seconds on the uh, heavy armor, so I wonder how long they'll be sticking around trying to pick it up. Look a little bit more focused on trying to take the fight to each other so far, though. But a big part of it is just controlling the map, just trying to just get a hold on where these pickups are. But both of them are just trading out almost an equal amount of these key things. Faz currently stacked a little bit higher, but Noctis positioned right near the Oh, wow. That quick shot from Faz is going to have to deter Noctis, or does he stay? I mean, Faz, his accuracy in this map has been unbelievable. I know commentators curse missed that one, but his rails have been sublime and almost every single one they've made a massive impact on how Noctis has been able to approach this but again so brave I, I think consistently I'm not sure Faz is prepared for Noctis to stay there and fight it because whenever the fight happens he's having to kind of quickly turn around in a split second like he's not aware that Noctis is fighting him but that said he's still doing a fantastic job of winning these exchanges and just like that. Takes out Sawlag as well. Noctis in big trouble now. That was such a wonderful combo though from Faz, knocking him into the air with a rocket after seeing him jump and then just keeping him up there as long as possible with the LG. That just takes confidence and good aim. You know, Noctis tried to fight back with some acid, but it wasn't quite enough. Faz taking a lot of damage here. The Noctis gets that return frag with a lightning gun. And now we've seen Noctis make a full comeback with Nyx before by herself, but can he do it now? He's got to take out a Nyx and a Ranger together. Hasn't got a huge amount of time to do it either. He's only really got one and a half minute left. That rocket could have been a bit game-changing, but I feel like, has uh, been dodging so well. I feel like that fumble jump on the uh, towards that sort of rail location might have given Noctis an opening. Because realistically, Faz couldn't really get out of that exchange. Here comes Noctis up behind. He understands he needs to be aggressive here. He only has 1 minute 15 left. If he doesn't win, he's going to lose this map, and then it's going to be 1-1. One, one. Well, we know the ghost walks down. Oh, there's that mid-air. Noctis just one step ahead, and he is still very much in this map. I love that split second. Listening out for the respawn. Gets an amazing spawn on Faz, and really, he tried to get out there with the die roll, but he was in a horrendous position in that final life. These guys have some of like my, my favorite exchanges in the in-game chat I've seen so far. Because it's so mild, but we know what they're playing for. They are playing for such a significant amount of money. Single elimination. There are no second chances here. But, you know, very much these guys, they've played with each other so much. They've been playing for so long. They still enjoy it, right? There's still the element of lightheartedness, but they can still play so good at a world oh! while having that kind of, you know, laxness. That rail. I think everyone felt that one. Oh, point blank. Oh, and Baz is going to take the lead again for another round. The way Noctis has been approaching this entire map, I mentioned this earlier on, but I know he mentioned that he's reached his goal in Duel. And, you know, if he does better, that's fantastic. But I feel like he's playing a little bit more loose. Like, he is being so bold. But there are certain players that when they're in this situation, they go, do I go in for the kill here? Do I try and fight? Hang on. He ate the acid over time. Baz will survive this exchange. He's got the injection, so he can survive if he wants to. 
And again, Noctis forced in this comeback situation. This poor Nyx having to do so much work, but Noctis has continually made it work. But he's got to do it again. If he, I didn't, this, if he loses this life, he has lost the map. And we are back to one map piece. I didn't really expect the unsung hero of his team composition to be Nyx. And a uh, quick little turnaround right there. Nice rail, and that's just been a running theme on this entire map. Fantastic rails all round, and that massively helped Faz take that map. It did, and I mean, Faz, clearly seeing why he chose that map particularly, Noctis didn't look anywhere near as comfortable there as he did, but I think a big part of it was Noctis was forcing those fights a lot, you know, really winning those one-on-one -on -one engagements early on, but as soon as Faz was able to take the lead and just play a little bit more careful, it worked out for him. Noctis was continuing to be brave, though, and I think we, we really saw that come out when he was using Nyx where he's always been brave and aggressive throughout this entire series, but unlike anything else when he picks Nyx, because the second he has Nyx, he, we sent it in the first map, he puts all of his eggs in one basket when he goes in for that sort of like assassination attempt where you go in for the ghost walk, you know, they can't hear it or see it or whatever, and then as you reappear on them, it's, it's uncontested damage because they just don't know that you're there. It works fantastically when he's Nyx. doesn't work so well with the other champions. When, he, when it's Nyx, he kind of gets that free hit because they can't see him. And in Blood Covenant, it just didn't work out as well. It did work, and it allowed him to make that really impressive comeback, but not quite enough to inch out the map, I think. So it's like you said, it's a bit of a surprise to see Noctis sort of like star performing champions so far in this, at least in this series, being Nyx of all champions. Yeah. I know Noctis, I mean, he's he's just in one of those players that just has a solid Nyx for sure. Like it's not a surprise seeing that his Nyx is good, but it's putting in so much work in comparison to all of his other champions. And I think it's like you said, it's down to his aggression. The way he plays just really seems to fit Nyx really well because you can go for those instant fights. You said before, there is no way you can prepare for a Nyx. If you don't see her ghost walk, if you don't hear her ghost walk, you are basically at risk of just being teleported on at any time. Speaking of teleporting, that telefrag, I'm still recovering from how sick <laughs> that telefrag was point blank, but the final map being in Ruins of Sarnath, if they do go with a very similar lineup, every single champion on this map will work it fantastically. But here's the mix-up. Who's going to go with the final champion? Is not just going to stick with Sorlag? Is he going to switch it up? Faz has indeed gone back to Sorlag, which does make sense on this map, and Noctis to follow through. So a complete mirror of team compositions. Not surprised, Sorlag on Ruins of Sarnath, on, I know on most maps, but Sarnath in particular, really effective in those little corners, those little corridors, where you know, you've got to go for LG, you've got to go for Rail, and if, if he catches you out any point there, you will die immediately. I mean, even the Heavy, which is like super closed quarters, super enclosed, if he catches you there as well, you're also dead. A lot of locations uh, I think she benefits quite heavily from. But not even just Solag. Ruins of Sarnath being one of those maps that we see Anarchy players really thrive. You know, it's it's, it's great for, I mean, I said before, he has that runaway element to him. Even though he is very aggressive, he's very fast, one of the most mobile champions in the game by far, he can still run that clock. He can play for the five minutes. He can take the engagements whenever he wants. And he has so much space to run around and just try and play that lame keep away style that he just well, doesn't want you to get anywhere near him. And Ruins is a great map for that. Yeah, he'll sort of just take the rail, keep you at distance, and make it so you can't really fight him, right? Where if he's just hitting you with rails over and over and over again, by the time you actually have the fight, you don't have as much health as you normally would have because you're just taking so much rails on the way in. But that said, he himself is very vulnerable to rails. So if you're good at dodging, that game plan will benefit you quite heavily. If not, you've got to make sure that you're getting those injections uh, stacked up, otherwise you're in a world of hurt. But here we go, the final map. And once again, guys, this is single elimination. Whoever loses this map is out of the dual championship. All good. I don't envy them. Wouldn't want to be in their shoes being one map away from elimination. You know, just think of the amount of individual matches these guys have played in their time on Quick Champions, but it boils down to one for them now. This next one map decides whether they go home or they stay in the championship. There's quite a nice chunk of change for whoever wins this match as well. These guys have already made themselves 10,000 by getting this far. If they win, that cash will only ever rack up higher and higher. And so will be the case for every single round to ridiculous degrees. But right now, Noctis just a little bit more stacked up. A little bit of a different spawn time between the Mega and Heavy. So they can fight for both, but speaking of the fight, the fight is taken to Faz, Noctis, with the first blood of this map. Faz opting not to go for the injection, I mean, you, you might think to yourself, why didn't you just pop the injection? But when you go for the injection, you are vulnerable. You can't shoot and use your ability at the same time. Oh, hang on a minute. Wow, there's a quick two frags for Noctis. Faz trying to force it, but Noctis more than ready. I respect the attempt, though. I mean, like Faz, he spawned right near the LG. If you can assassinate someone with Nyx and they don't know you're there, that's going to be a huge trail of that LG damage that you can't really do anything about. And he had a really high chance of taking him out there. Noctis' rockets were just way too on point. Faz, though, none of those acids connected to Noctis, so evaded the damage. 
Will make health too. He's being pushed. Oh, away. wow! Deletion on the health. Goodbye, Sawlag. I mean, if you're Sawlag, you <laughs> <laughs> but if you're if you're okay, Sawlag, you kind of have to because of that passive where she. <laughs> When uh, Sawlag's going to be bunny hopping around the map because of that passive. If you do get caught in the middle of a jump with the OG, you're just going to get pushed away. He wasn't able to get anywhere near that mega health. Sorry, that, that, the, uh, that's, that's, that's an important round for Noctis, though. After losing so convincingly on Blood Covenant, being able to take the first round in such a dominating fashion, he's now going to you know, be able to tell himself, okay, I still have a chance. I'm still in the running for winning this series. And now one round down, two left to go. Here we go again, history's gonna repeat itself. They're gonna fight near Rocket Launcher, but this time Faz doing a little bit more damage, using that pillar to try and save himself, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. No, it isn't Faz with the LG. Manages to get the first blood of this round instead. Faz just played that 1v1 so much better. Not just unfortunately missing a couple of crucial rockets. LG tracking wasn't oh, wow. quite on the mark. He's going to go in for the kill there as well. Even if Noctis collects the heavy armor, he still hasn't got a huge amount of health left at all. Especially when you take into account he's got the rocket, he's got the LG, he's got the railgun, everything he needs to just delete health. Still though, Noctis now down a champion. Faz has really been thriving when he gets that lead. Almost every single round, Faz will find himself getting the first frag. Still though, trying to get away, nice. Noctis. Did not to chase. I mean, that that is a dangerous situation to be on ruins. You know that that long corridor, almost guaranteed rails if you have the accuracy, which we know both of these players do. It's commentator's curse. Two rails missed. Oh, but this this is the corridor I'm talking about, Andy. Oh, all right. Now it's the commentator's curse. Right. But Faz has got the advantage again. I wonder what's going to happen when they fight, because Noctis will have access to his Ghost Walk now. So those sort of up-close confrontations. If he wants to get away, he might have the ability to, and does, saves himself That was from actually that a rocket. crucial Ghost Walk, too. We saw that rocket was going. That was bang on where he was, but Noctis can get the return frag, evening things out. And again, this Nyx face-off. Well, Faz caught sight of the reappear for the Ghost Walk, but I just think it was a bit too late. He was already in the middle of the air, he'd popped this injection, so while he's getting hit by all that LG, once again, he's not able to fight back because he's stuck in that animation. If there was one time Noctis had to catch him out of action, that was the moment to do it. This is an interesting clash, though, because it's, it's oh. two players. Oh, literally landing, on, landing his head. on his head. What an exchange right there. And oh. the rail to keep him away from the mega health. If that rail missed, he would have been able to collect the mega in that situation. I mean, what exchange was that? How did that happen? He was just jumping around and then out of nowhere. Oh, I didn't know this platform was here, but it was the head of your enemy. Oh, and Faz goes down again. Noctis with a clean two rounds. That was a ridiculous round. Noctis is on match point. That was insane exchange, but he has no choice. He's got to make three straight rounds and it's game over. I mean, both players have a very similar game plan when it comes to when and where they pick champions, but the way they're playing them is so different. But that really is the beauty of Quake Champions, right? In Duel, you can pick the same champions, but it's how you play them. It is all about how you play them. And Faz, desperately down on life. If Faz loses Anarchy, he's going to be in a very bad situation. Not just with the read, trying to get the uh, rocket launcher. If Faz was there, probably would have taken the fight. He knows that Faz is weak oh. and right round the corner. Hello, Faz. See you later. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Faz down on the back foot now with Sawlag out. Noctis with his Anarchy stacked up. Mega health, heavy armor. A little bit of that still left. Oh no, only gets the uh, ticking damage of the acid, none of the impact damage, so that's going to be down for a significant amount of time. I wonder if Noctis can fight him before. Still Here he comes. Noctis, you see he's got the speed, he's got the momentum building up, but there's a nice rail to just stop him Whoa. dead in his tracks. He's got to be careful, he's got no armor, he gets hit by one rail and he's going to die. Faz out there, Faz has seen him. LG, this is a bad situation for Noctis. Can Faz shoot him down and he gets that rail, just enough damage. Faz is very much still back That's, into this map. But now Faz has a saw lag with just short of 200 health, 150 armor. If he finds Noctis and gets a good read on how he escapes with Ghost Walk, he is dead 100%. That was such a crucial frag for Faz, though, after being down. I mean, that was an in he almost instantly lost his Anarchy. He desperately needed to get rid of Noctis, because Anarchy is such a great champion for him. Oh, no! Stuck from below, but a very tanky champion of Sawlag. Not going to have to worry. Oh, wait, no. Uh -oh. He's using the Ghost Walk to survive. Going in for the LG. Knocks him into the Mega. Faz, way too healthy for Noctis to take this fight. Oh, Noctis jumping down. Is he chasing this? Is he going in for the kill? Noctis this is being very brave. brave. Boy. Ooh. That was so brave trying to go in there. Faz, though, shutting him down completely. It's a saw lag mirror match. But Noctis, he's made comebacks before. If he makes the comeback now, he's going to be moving on in this bracket. And Faz is eliminated. Although, I mean, this is such a stressful situation. It is still match point for Noctis. If Noctis oh. wins the round, he will win 
the series, but Faz is in such a good situation to just bring this back a little bit. But the difference is so much damage coming through. Oh, oh wow. And he can just walk right into any of that. But what a good spawn. Nice prediction as well. No rocket successfully lands, but he does know where Faz is. The problem is Faz has no weapons to fight this. Only a default machine gun. Yeah, Faz has to try and collect as much ammunition as he can. He needs as many tools as he can get his hands on. He has got the ghost walk, so he can nullify the asset a little bit, but... I mean, this is going to be dangerous. This is the most important life in Quake Champions Faz has ever played. If he loses this life, he's out. And the rocket connects. Noctis eliminates Faz. Moving on in the bracket with a dominant performance on this final map. That was a really good turnaround from Noctis. Faz, I mean, that was such a great back and forth. An amazing turnaround. Noctis with such an early lead. Faz desperately trying to bring it back and almost being able to do it by getting the advantage in that final round. But Noctis, I mean, composure really is what Noctis was just, just, just reigning supreme with in that entire time. How many rounds was he down with? Just one champion left, but still able to bring the whole thing back. Look, if Noctis keeps playing like that, he is in a great spot in this top 16 bracket because he's been doing well against everyone. I know Noctis is sort of known in many ways to be a team player because he's won QuakeCon for team modes before and he is in the sort of top group stage with his team Notifast, which has got Faz in it. So, you know, Faz, he's not going to be 100% heartbroken about this because his focus will be in sacrifice. But really, Noctis has just been in Quake Champions since day one. He qualified in week one. He bodied his way through regionals. He is looking really dangerous. And to be honest, one of my picks to be a big sleeper hit to move it on far in the bracket. You know what Noctis has been doing, right? With, it seems like every champion that he loses, he just gets stronger and more powerful. He's like, have you ever played one of those old games, the boss fights, right? And the boss has like loads of life bars. And every time you take a life bar away, the life bar changes color and he gets access to new abilities and new attacks. And it just seems way harder to deal with. That's Noctis right now. Only it's in Quick Champions 2017. That makes a lot of sense. But really, we saw brave play, but it seemed like very loose play. You know, where he's he's just sort of just going with the flow. If he thinks he can get a kill, he'll just go in with it. It, it was a very sort of clean way of him playing the game. But I said it earlier on. It's because he mentioned that his goal in Duel was just to get this far. And he didn't really care how he did after this. Which means that I think it does lift a lot of pressure off your shoulders. You'll just sort of go with the flow, and if you do well, you do well. That might be a golden mentality for Noctis to have because he just took out Faz and Faz is no joke. Obviously, huge congratulations to Faz for making it as far as he did. Best of luck in Sacrifice because no doubt not too fast are looking to try and win that entire tournament. And Noctis moving on, taking a little bit more pocket change and then some really in duel. But while we get the next match underway, don't go anywhere. We're going to go for a quick break and we'll be right back.